What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode number 64 of our Cincinnati Reds franchise. Today we're doing the off-season, and then in next episode we'll have a full-season sim, and that's going to be it for the series. So after this, it's going to be all road to the show up until MLB 19 when that comes out, and I hope you guys enjoy that. It's going to be a continuation of the story of Ricky Hoberman, which was a created player that I made a long, long time ago as a kid, and uh, hopefully you guys find some interest in that. So Pretty crazy, though, because you guys last episode saw the end of the season. You guys are well aware that our coaching staff contracts were expired. So Doug Brocale, our manager of, I believe, two seasons? three se Actually, three seasons. Doug Brocale was a manager here for three years, won a World Series. And then after that, just kind of was kind of ho-hum, right? I offered him an extension contract renegotiation, and he's he's electing to go with the Detroit Tigers as the farm director. So he's going to oversee the operations of the minor league system. So pretty crazy. And if you guys don't know who Doug Rokale is, look him up. He was a former pitcher for the Detroit Tigers. So he's got some sort of connection with the Tigers organization, which, you know, that it's kind of cool, but it sucks because now we have a situation where you have some guys on staff, but we don't have a manager, right? So Freddie Gonzalez would actually be the the best, the most likely guy to like move up and have him become our manager. But you can't you can't move him up, which kind of sucks. So if anybody is watching this out of from MLB the Show, my recommendation would be that you you're able to promote a um, a staff member to become your manager. So this kind of stinks because Freddie Gonzalez would be like the guy that I would probably move up to become a manager at this point. So yeah, otherwise, right now, you'd have to fire him. You'd have to pay the $3.4 million and then uh, go from there. So, And really, when we look at it, there's no one really else here on this list that would be a good manager, okay? So the only guy that would would be Tony La Russa. So knowing full well that Doug Brokale is not going to be our manager for next season. We need to be looking at who is going to be, right? So Freddie Gonzalez would probably be my pick to be that manager, but we had already offered him a contract at the same time as we offered Doug Brocale to be our manager. So when Doug Brocale decided that he was gone, Freddie Gonzalez had already accepted the first base coach option, right? Which sucks because you can't actually move Freddie Gonzalez up. So what stinks is you can't promote him, right? You'd have to fire him and then offer him the managerial job. So that that really sucks because he would be the guy because he's already had some management experience with Atlanta, with the Florida Marlins. I, th I believe that's when they were the Florida Marlins. He was managing out there. But we'd have to, we'd have to pay the 3.4 mil and then we'd have to fire him and then move him up, offering him more money just to become the manager, right? which sucks. So I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm just going to allow that to happen, right? We've already got this guy, Bobby Sutter, to be our hitting coach, third base coach, Michael Jones. We need a farm director, a pitching coach, and a manager. And basically where, where I'm going with this is that we've, we look at, when we look at this guy, Bruno Matos, at 21 mil for three years to be the Red Sox new manager, Tony La Russa would be the next guy on my list. Because, I mean, nobody, nobody else here, I mean, this seems like it'd be kind of cool to, to get a guy like Will Sammons. I mean, look at the look at the numbers there. Plus two in power, batting clutches one, minus three in blocking. Omar Cannon would would be pretty good, but again, none of these guys have any sort of backstory, right? They're all made up. As, as far as I know, they're all made up. Uh, Ramon Santiago is real. Freddie Benavides is real. I would imagine that some of the guys with at least like Kurt Young, pretty sure he's real, right? Matt. Viegas, probably not real. Okay, gray hair, all weird looking. I'm actually going to look him up right now just to make sure because I just basically made fun of the guy. <laughs> so if you guys hear me typing here, Matt Viegas. Matt Viegas. He is not real. He's not real. That's kind of what I thought. That's kind of what I thought. But I mean, we got Shinhe Hinch, probably not real. Fred Sinisi, probably not real. Earl Goslin, maybe, maybe he's real. But again, there's just not a lot of backstory. You know, I, I'm interested in the backstories. I'm interested in actually real life managers, right? And honestly, I was looking at Freddie Benavides to kind of be the manager here 
He's been with the Reds organization for quite some time, and it would make sense, but he's just not interested in that offer. He's just really not. He just wants to be a pitching coach. He wants to be kind of a positional kind of coach. But I'm looking at Tony Russa. I'd rather have him be the farm director, honestly, and because he's old. I mean, he's 65 years old. Not a lot of guys are going to be wanting to manage at 65 years old. Um but he's the next available option, like for me. If I look at guys like, you know, Ramon Santiago, he would be a nice manager too. But you know, he's probably not as good to be a manager type. So maybe if we get Larusa in here, maybe he retires midway through the contract. I'm not sure how that's going to work out. But again, I think I'd rather have Tony Larusa be our coach. He's proven, right? He can coach the vets, he can coach the rookies and the young guys. I think it's a good move to to go after this. So we'll see how this all pans out. But at, as far as it looks right now, it looks like we're going to get uh, all three. So it looks like we're going to get Santiago, we're going to get Benavides, and we're going to get Tony La Russa to be the next Reds manager. So interesting turn of events, to say the least. Let's just keep on keeping on and see what happens here. So Ramon Santiago is the farm director now. Benavides has accepted the Mariners' offer, and Noah would not like to. And Tony Larusa has accepted the Rockies' offer as manager. <laughs> okay, okay. So this sucks. <laughs> sucks. We have everything except for our pitching coach and a manager. So I think at this point, I think at this point, when we look at who's who else is available here to be a manager, uh. Ugh. Yikes, 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 yikes. We might just have to bite the bullet. We might have to bite the bullet. I think Kurt Young was a was a red at one point. I could be wrong about that, but he just looks familiar to me. Like we've already like seen him. Um Yeah, uh this this doesn't look too good there, boys. We're gonna I think what we're gonna have to do. There's Scott Service. He was a manager of the, I think the uh, Seattle Mariners at one point. Um, yeah, there's just nothing here, guys. Oh, Bob Melvin. Bob Melvin. Bunting minus three, speed minus one. I say we go for it, honestly, because, again, manager, former manager. Let's do it, right? Let's do it. Because, again, I think it would be kind of cool – to get Freddie Gonzalez to be our manager, but I just don't think that that's optimal because then if we lose him, if we lose him, if we cut him, have to pay, and then now he's on the market, you know, if he if we lose him to to being another manager of another team, because there are some suitors up here. If you guys look at this real quick, let's just go this way. If you guys look at this, there's some there's some play there's some teams that are looking for a manager. David Colon, like you know, man, the uh, Nationals there, the White Sox, Red Sox still, Tigers, yeah. So there's there's offers up on the board there. So it, we got to be careful. Got to definitely be careful. Let's um, ooh, Bud Black is in here too. Bud Black, let's do it. Let's get him that that 3.5. There you go. All right, so here's our offers right now. Bob Melvin to be the manager, Bud Black to be the pitching coach, Freddie Gonzalez at first base, Michael Jones, Ramon Santiago, and Bobby Sutter. So hopefully that that works. Let's uh, let's advance. Let's advance and see. Bob Melvin has accepted the Reds' offer as manager for three years. Bud Black has accepted the pitching coach offer. So sweet. So sweet. So actually, guys, with all the pending offers that we have with our younger guys here on this roster – I'm actually looking at moving a player to make some room for cap space as well. So when we look at Trey Turner, he's obviously going to be our shortstop for this season. Jose Peraza is going to be on our team for this season. Wilmer Defoe is also trying to find his way, right? We're paying him we're paying him quite a bit of money. We're paying him almost half a, a little over half a million dollar per season just to kind of be our primary starter at the AAA level, right? But when we look at our young shortstops in the AAA level, I mean, we've got guys that are in their mid-70s. I mean, Kevin Maiton is starting to really climb up there. He's been with us for four seasons, right? Domingo Leba, we just acquired him from the 
Diamondbacks, we've got Jose Israel Garcia at 23 years old. Uh, Rodriguez at 27. You know, he's probably not going to do much. But, you know, you know, and we also got Ryan Franks, too, at 20 years old at being a backup third. Shed Long really hasn't really done a whole lot in his time at the major league level. 257 last season when he did get the call up. But we also acquired Luis Garcia, too. He's 67 overall at 22 with a B potential. Like, these guys are, these guys are about getting ready to start making their way here to the major leagues, right? So I'm looking at moving Scooter Jeanette. And it sucks because, but you know what? We're already in the season 20. We're going to be heading into 2022, right? And when we look at Scooter's numbers, they've gone down consistently over the last few years, right? Last year, had the same amount of games played, right? 150, 153, 153. Had this, had about the same number of at-bats. The production is very steady, right? It's not going to blow you away, though. But 13 home runs... Not going to cut it, guys. 56 RBIs, probably not going to cut it. 19 homers, that was pretty good. 22 here, 17 and 72, 22, 72. But now the numbers have really dropped off, right, in his eight years in the league. He's 31 years old right now. It's time to move on from Scooter Jeanette, in my opinion. So when we move Jose Peraza over to being the second baseman, he's actually an 85 overall. Okay, so that really puts a damper on Scooter's uh, potential for us for this year, right? So Scooter Jeanette going to be out of that job. $875,000 per year. This is Peraza's last season, and I want to see what he can do. I want to give him the playing time that he deserves. I want to really see what he's going to be able to do for us in his final year on contract. Scooter making $6.4 million. If we can offload that, if we can offload that, that's going to be big time for our cap space. We're going to be able to do do some things, do some really good things in free agency, possibly go after a young type of player because that's what we really need. You know, when we look at first base, it's going to pretty much be Paven Smith and Joey Votto, right? I'm looking at Paven Smith to kind of be our right fielder, keeping Joey Votto satisfied and happy. Like, he performed. He was a 77 overall last year, guys. He had 22 home runs and 73 ribbies. That's pretty solid. So that's good. Right, the contact numbers are still there. The power numbers are pretty decent, right? We're paying a lot him a ton of freaking money though. $21 million at 38 years old. Like it every everything would would say to move on from Joey Votto. But again, I thought last year was his last season. This year is his last year. Okay. Five out of five. This is it. 2022. That's it. So he's gonna free up a lot of money off the books, but I, I want to see what Paven Smith can do out in right field for us, maybe play some first base when, when Votto needs a day off. I, I would imagine he, he's going to start needing some more days off, being 38 years old. And I'm really looking at Jose Peraza at second base. I think that that's a good opportunity for him. If we can move on from Scooter, we can start acquiring maybe some more prospects as well because I don't really see anything that really stands out as a major need on this on this team. You know, Sinzel is going to be our guy at third can have Ryan Franks up at the major league level as well. Possibly maybe acquire a third baseman for the future. That would probably be a good idea. Shortstop is going to be Turner and Defoe. Maybe if Kevin Maiton shows up in the spring, we can we can possibly consider giving him a call up. He might be our our backup third baseman. I don't know. I don't know. Probably not though cuz Ryan Franks is is really good. I think he's he's got to get a shot at the major league level even at 20 years old, guys. That that power is legit. Those contact numbers are pretty good too, all things considered. Uh, Winker and Trammell are going to be the, the left fielders, right? Actually, Taylor Trammell is a center fielder. I want to get that right so that uh, the CPU doesn't um, doesn't do anything crazy here. Let's see. Let's see. Primary position center field. Yep, that's what we want. Okay, so also excuse me for my voice yet again, guys. I'm still trying to get over the get over the sickness here. So Tra Taylor Trammell is going to be our center fielder. Right fielder is probably going to be Paven Smith right now. And then uh, as far as the backups go, that's the the job is the jobs are wide open, right? So we got Thomas Moore, Wimberly, they could win it. They could win that backup left field job. Maybe maybe even Alfonso Anaya, he really hit really well for us. Played in 98 games, right? Had uh one home run, 28 ribbies, but he hit 320, guys. So he he gets on base. He gets on base. OBP's in the 400s at 415, right? He, he's pretty solid, guys. He's act, He can actually play shortstop. I don't know how he can play shortstop at, well, he's 5'8", 180. He can play some short. 
Um, he's just kind of short. He looks a little stocky in that photo, but I think he's probably going to be the guy that plays uh, backup center field in my mind. So we'll see how that goes. As far as the pitching staff goes, maybe we might be able to get a little bit better, but maybe as far as like prospects go, because look at this, Castillo, Keiko, Carrasco, Green, and Molly. That's pretty, it's pretty legit in my mind. Relief pitching, Miller, LeClerc, Norris, Finnegan, Bryce. I'm not thinking about bringing Austin Bryce back though. He didn't even pit, he hasn't pitched for us in two years, right? So he's been kind of stuck down at that minor league level. Uh, Michael Lorenzen probably going to take over that Bryce role. So that means we're going to have uh, one, two, three, four, five relievers. And closer is going to be uh, Andrew Miller. So he needs to be moved into that closing spot so we can uh, so we can make sure that he gets... There you go. So closing spot goes to Andrew Miller. 96 overall right there. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. One, two, three... Four, four relievers, and I mean, we'll call up another player, possibly maybe even uh, Yarbrough or maybe even Jared Ambrose. Maybe it's about time he start getting into into some major league action. This is a guy that we drafted, Chris Rodriguez, a guy that we traded for, Matt Tabor trade, uh, Mauricio Crespo. I, I believe he was um, he was already here. I, I believe Herbert Ray was a draft pick. Villalobos was a draft pick. Yeah, so these guys are starting to have their come up a little bit. It's going to be interesting to see how they all pan out. So as, as far as getting the team better, I would say that relief pitching probably is the way that we need to go. Just looking at some guys here, probably Chris Devensky would be a guy that I would really uh, try to go after here. Maybe even Trevor May used to pitch for the yeah Minnesota Twins here. But, um, not too bad, but he'd be kind of a depth type of, the, type of guy. Everybody else doesn't really move the, move the needle for me. Uh, Mike Montgomery would be a pretty solid get, but then again, he's kind of doing the same thing as Ryan Yarbrough. Uh, Liberator, probably a lot more expensive. Like he's going to push us down to 883, right? So he's about 200, 200K per week. Chris Devensky, yeah, he's looking at 253 per week. Yeah, so um, pretty expensive options right here, but yeah, definitely guys that you'd that you'd want to consider going after. Okay. All right. So with all that being said, all be, that being said, let's end up making this trade here for Scooter Jeanette. Let's move on from him. It's going to up our cash flow, right, from where it stands right now at the 107 to 1.3. So it's going to be plus, plus 0.24. So 240K per week. We're going to well, it's, it's actually right there, <laughs> right under the uh, final year for contract. 240 per week. We're going to be moving that to somewhere else, right? I like some of the trades that are up on the board here. This is actually a pretty interesting trade right here. Josh Reddick and Will Harris for Scooter Jeanette. That's a very, very good trade. Now, it does drop our cash flow. It, it doesn't really do a whole lot for our cash flow because, like I said, we're already stuck at 107. By moving on from Jeanette, we do get two players. We get one more uh, really solid relief option in Will Harris at 85, and then we get Josh Reddick some power out in right field. But then again, it's kind of diminishing returns too because Aquino is a 78, right? And we're already paying him to be a 78 overall player, right? So why acquire Josh Reddick when he's not going to really even play? You know, he's he's the same type of handedness as Paven Smith, and Paven Smith's going to play right field. I don't know. Doesn't It doesn't do a whole lot for me. I know that it looks good, but it's not the offer that we're going to make. Okay, guys, we need to we need to look at that cash flow and uh, allow ourselves some more budget in order to get another free agent signed in here. And you know, maybe we need to look a little younger rather than the 37 and the 35 year old vet. You know, there are some young players that are available here, but I'm going to keep on looking. All right, guys. So here's a trade that I actually like. It does a little bit better in the cash flow I, I know that I we were just denied a trade that you know didn't do our cash flow a whole lot of a whole lot of good here but I'm looking at this as far as a positional eligibility type of trade right the fielding's a little bit better for Tim Beckham the power numbers are way better than Jeanette at 74 and a 61 contact at 65 and 63 that's pretty much about the same he's more of a well-rounded hitter than Jeanette is right now and I say that I say that with some caution here because in real life I know for a fact that Scooter Jeanette's a better hitter than Tim Beckham. 
We can all admit that, right? It's just that's just factual information. But as far as this universe goes, as far as the game goes, they contacted at 52, they contacted at 82 versus 65, 63, right? 74, 61. The fielding's a lot better, right? The speed numbers are a little bit better than Jeanette. It gives us a, it gives us a little bit more options as far as speed goes, and it gives us a backup in third base, right? I mean, you can basically make the make the argument. That Tim Beckham being traded over to us gives us a backup second base option, right? He can act because that's where he's going to play in my mind. It's going to allow Ryan Franks to come in at some at some crucial spots for you know when Senzel needs a needs a break, right? Ryan Franks actually is a left-handed hitter, so he can maybe even play against right-handed hitters or right-handed pitchers at some point when Senzel needs a rest, right? So it gives us it gives us just a little bit more flexibility, right? It gives us flexibility with cash flow. I mean, we get a, we get one year older, but we're also save, we're saving money, right? And we're also looking at this as far as you know what makes sense for for the team. And we need some more power numbers. We need some more power numbers. We need a guy to be able to come off the bench and give us that that extra pop, you know? I mean, we got Ryan Franks that can do just that. But other than that, I mean, look at the, looking at the starting lineup here, guys. Trey Turner pretty much no power. Jesse Winker was our one of our leading home run hitters last year with 18, right? Taylor Trammell had 12. Uh, Alfonso, Alfonso and I had one. That's because he didn't really get a lot of playing time. Uh, Aquino didn't really contribute a whole lot whatsoever. Nick Senzel had 24, so he took a huge step forward. Uh, Paven Smith last year had 10. Votto had 22. So outside of, <laughs> it was Votto and Senzel that had 20 home runs, and Jesse Winker had night or uh, 18. So then we look at Tim Beckham, who had 24, consistently hits about 20 home runs every year. It's a type of player that I like. I think that we need to do this, and again, it helps our cash flow. So let's pull the trigger on this and get Tim Beckham on the roster. And like I said, it, it only helps our cash flow up, and I I think that that's a good trade for us to to have made. So if we move Tim Beckham over to second base, he will be backing up. Uh, Jose Peraza, and then now, now we're able to possibly make a few uh, free agent moves that will help us out for this upcoming season. So there you go. So Tim Beckham now an 80 overall as we moved him over to second base. So, all right. So the Cubs get Kenley Jansen. It's an interesting sign there for the Cubbies. The Mets go ahead and sign Byron Buxton to five years for $120 million for a guy who's hitting 260. Come on. All right, so giving you guys a little update here. We did get Paven Smith. We got Hunter Green, Franks, Rodriguez, Ambrose, Leba, Santalan, Matt Tabor, Jeter Downs, Brady Klein, Peter Davis, Luis Garcia, Nick Longy, Kenneth Etheridge, Emery Tobin, Alberto Valencia, and Wilson Joyce. So Reds' remaining unsigned players are Taylor Trammell, Thomas Moore, Wimberly, Molly, Maiton, Marcus Wilson, Anaya. Yeah, so we got some work to do, but, you know, hey, we're doing pretty solid right now. We've got, let's see here, we have $921,000 left in our cash flow. So, yet again, we're still able to make these moves, the moves that we need to, to sign our guys here. And uh, hopefully, maybe, we're able to get in on some, some bigger uh, free agents. Freddie Freeman going to the Cardinals. So apparently, I mean, he didn't he he's making about the same money that uh, Buster Posey is. Interesting. So now we're gonna have to worry about Freddie Freeman, guys. And then Lindor. Ooh, Lindor, nine years. Going to the Chicago Cubs for nine years. So he's gonna spend the rest of his career pending a trade. He's gonna be 37 years old by the time that contract is up. So, but the Cubbies, man. So the NL Central. The NL Central just got a lot more competitive, guys. Holy crap! Oof! Wow! So look at the—I mean, look at the uh, the Brewers here. The Brewers are are very very solid baseball team here. Pirates getting a little bit better. The Cardinals just got Freddie Freeman. Ouch! That hurts. That hurts. Cubbies just got Lindor and Kenley Jansen. Wow! So the Cubs are going to be good yet again Ooh, we got to make some moves boys let's see if we uh ended up getting anybody back here so we did 
uh, red signed players, right? So we got Taylor Trammell. We're down to 700K in cash flow. We're still going to be able to afford all of our guys, right? So that's just how it's going to how it's going to pan out. But you can see why that trade um, for Scooter Jeanette really has helped us, right? It's helped us be able to sign some of these players that we need to bring back. And I feel like the, the team got better because of it. I mean, when we're just looking again at the second base situation, you know, Tim Beckham is going to provide a little bit more power at the second base slot. And, you know, he can even play back up third if anything happens. You know, you always have to have an insurance plan in case people get hurt or people are struggling, right? And he's, he can also play some backup shortstop too in case Defoe possibly struggles and we got to move him down. You know, there's a lot of things at play. So I, I think the team as it is looks pretty, pretty good. I don't think we stack up too great against the Cubs or, you know, the Cardinals. But, you know, it, it's basically our pitching staff that's going to have to carry us yet again this year. So Castillo, Keiko, Carrasco, and then we're going to need some some big-time production and, and run scoring from Senzel, Peraza, Turner. Uh, Votto's going to have to come through. You know, Pavin Smith's going to have to come through yet again. Daniel Norris at relief. Jesse Winker had a great season last year. Uh, Tyler Stevenson's a good offensive piece, but you know we're, we've got depth, guys. We're a solid overall team from up, from bottom to top, from top to bottom. I mean, so you know, I mean, we have a chance at doing some good things in 2022. Uh, it's a very competitive-looking team, but uh, you know, we don't have a lot of star power, I guess you'd say. So that's kind of the team that I actually like to follow, right? It makes it for more interesting storylines. So let's keep going. Mariners are going to get Christian Yelich, National sign Javier Baez, to five years, 78.8. So the Nationals, yet again, are spending a lot of money. Chris Bryant going to the Dodgers. Oof. At least he's out of the NL Central now. We don't have to worry about Chris Bryant. Miguel Sano also going to the Cardinals. So the Cardinals are not stopping. The Cardinals are not stopping making their uh, big-time moves here. So... I think it's I think it's about time. I think it's time we start making some some moves here down in the free agent uh, list. I don't know we're not going to be able to afford a big time player unless we move on from Joey Votto. Then again, that's that's the big thing. And I know you guys are probably you know getting kind of sick and tired of hearing it. You know me talking about Joey Votto all the time, but you know I he hit 22 home runs last year when he even was at 77 overall so i know we're paying a lot of money for that but you know he's he's still a pretty pretty great player to to have on your team diamondback signed Corey seager dodgers get jose iglesias cubbies signed chris archer anderson and Ciarte goes to the mariners addison russell goes to the orioles wow a lot of movement a lot of things happening in this offseason guys um we're just trying to hang in there. <laughs> 567 cash flow right now, and uh, we've pretty much, yeah, we've we've signed everybody. Um, that was an arbitration offer. Let's. Uh, we need to we need to sign Nick Senzel for long term, guys. That that needs to happen. So, let's uh, let's get him down to the 9.3 that he's asking for and see where that goes. I want to sign him to like a four year deal. He's going to be 30 at that point. Think that that's a pretty a good spot to possibly renegotiate the contract versus uh, sitting there at like 33, right? And then getting into a Joey Votto type of situation where it's like, do you sign the guy or do you not, right? So, you know, we do have a 29 year old there. Dexter Fowler would be a nice little option, but here's Anthony Jimenez, a pretty decent outfielder right there. Defensively speaking, he's pretty solid, but again. Here's a player, Alfonso Arroyo, 24 years old. Remember this guy? We were looking at Alfonso Arroyo. He hit the, he hit those home runs against us in San Francisco. Hit 20 home runs. Hmm, 20 home runs. 302 in 2020. Didn't do much in 2021. That must have been either an injury or he just didn't get a lot of time. Uh, 271 with 12 bombs. He's he's a pretty cheap outfielder, right? He's, he looks like he's pretty. Pretty good all around. 73 and 67 contact. Let's see how much he's going to cost. He's going to cost 21000 per week. So at the very least, at the very minimum, if we sign this guy, we know what he can do. He's pretty solid. Let's just let's go, go ahead and sign him. He's going to be 28 years old by the time his contract is up. Let's go ahead and do that. And then when we look at, actually, let's go ahead and look at the outfield situation. Out in left field, he got Winker. 
Backup job with Wimberley and Moore still up for grabs, right? And then when we look at center field, we got Alfonso Anaya. He's probably going to get the call up, but we don't know. And then we've got Philip Irvin, possible we could get the call up. Aristides Aquino could get the call up, but we know Paven Smith's going to play right field. So the backup, the two backup outfield jobs are up for grabs. And if we were able to get Alfonso Arroyo in here at 73 overall, he's 24 years old. Right, we've already talked about that. And his numbers are pretty good, right, at 73 and 67. So it's all going to come down to how these guys perform. Having more competition is a healthy thing, okay? Go ahead and keep on, keep on going here and just simulate the winter meetings. There's nothing really else to do. Uh, I think we're pretty set. We're pretty solid as it is with uh, Miller, Castillo, Keiko, Carrasco, Sinzel, Peraza, Turner. It's a pretty solid team, guys. I'm, I'm very impressed with uh, what we've done with with the roster. Let's go ahead and get into spring training. I'll update you guys on any type of you know moves and trades that uh, that have happened. Okay, so here is a move. So check this out. The Angels have moved on from Billy Hamilton. They've sent him to the Tampa Bay Rays. So he's going over to the Rays for Miguel Arturo and Austin Franklin. Interesting. So that's the big trade out of the winter meetings by the looks of it. So yeah, that's the only trade, actually. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of movement going on this year. All right, let's keep on looking. So nope, just there's just no movement. No movement at all. Ariadas remains unsigned. Tommy Pham remains unsigned. Chris Davis as well. Even Max Scherzer. Wow. So if, would we even be able to afford Max Scherzer? No, we would not. Would we be able to afford Jake Arietta? No, we would not. So sucks. We'd have to make a move. We'd have to make a trade in order to bring any of those players in. So, all right. Tomorrow's the last day to renew contracts. Let's stop simulating. Let's renew contracts. There's nobody, nobody there, nobody available to do so. So bada bing, bada boom. So here we go, guys. Spring training, of course, against Cleveland and Corey Kluber. <laughs> <laughs> the spring training schedule just doesn't change, and it's hilarious that Corey Kluber has been with the Indians for this long, right? So, sucks, but it is that's the way it is. All right, so we've already seen that contracts, scout contracts. Nope, not not even worried about scouting at this point because. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter now. So when we look at the 40-man roster, here is your spring training lineup. It's just the 40-mans. It's the 40-man guys. Let's take, take a look at the bottom and see who's who's uh, who's up. So we got Matt Tabor, Leba, Chris Rodriguez, Kevin Maiton, Rowdy Reed, Anaya, Mela, Hudson, White, Yarbrough, Irvin. I like it. I like what we're doing here. So let's see. Alfonso Arroyo is up. He did get the call up. Sweet. I love it. I want to see how he does in spring training. Hopefully we get some at-bats for him and uh, really have that healthy competition. So that is going to be it for this episode, guys. And then next episode, we're going to do a full-on simulation and see how this team does. And if you guys look at our rank, by the way, we're ninth. We are ninth in the major leagues, fourth in contact, 7th in power, 3rd in pitching, 6th in speed, 26th on defense. We don't play very good defense, apparently. Not sure why that is. Maybe it's because of second base, the arm strength with Peraza, and uh, shortstop with Trey Turner. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's our outfield. Maybe our outfield is not very good defensively. Not sure. But I think we're a pretty good team as it is. We're number 9. We've done a, we've done a really bang-up job into making this team uh, a legit thing, a a big red machine, like we said that the, the, the goal was at the beginning of this series. So, guys, I will catch you on Friday for the next episode, episode number 65. And that's going to be the end of the, of the series. So 65 episodes, done. Got to love it, right? All right, so that's going to be it. Leave your comments and feedback about this episode and, this, and basically this, uh, this series in the comment section below. I'd love to hear what you guys' thoughts are. And then uh, after episode 65 is up, after this simulation of 2022 is up, we're going to be going right into Ricky Holberman every Friday and uh, just doing that MLB road to the show. So, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. As always, go Reds and peace.